All right, so let's go through the scientific method. So the first thing is we have an observation. An observation of natural phenomena, okay? What happens? Uh, you observe something and then you start questioning, right? So then a question. What, how, or why? Then you come up with a hypothesis. And what is a hypothesis? A hypothesis is a tentative, testable explanation based on observations that can be investigated. Okay, so that's where the hypothesis is. It's a tentative, testable explanation. Now, this hypothesis must be supported by data, by evidence. Another thing about hypothesis is they must be testable, like I said, but they have to be also falsifiable. In other words, it must be capable of being demonstrated to be false. I have a couple of examples here of hypothesis. I'm going to put here one and number two. All right, so here's two hypotheses. Um, one is kind of a good hypothesis and the other one is a bad hypothesis. So for example, plants will grow better after adding coffee grounds to the soil. Now I'm gonna say this is gonna be a bad hypothesis. Why? Well, the reason why it's not great hypothesis and not a good hypothesis is because plants will grow better. Well, what is better, right? You think about a plant growing better. Uh, many people can have their different, different definitions of what better is for a plant, right? Could be taller, could be wider, could could be leafier, right? Could be greener, um, could be a lot of things, right? So what is better? But what about? I want to say this is going to be the good hypothesis. Uh, plants will grow taller. Oh, taller. Yeah, taller. I can tell that, right? We can tell whether something is taller or not, right? And we can measure something based on height. So plants will grow taller after adding coffee grounds to the soil. Another example, girls are smarter than boys. Why is this a bad hypothesis? A oh, poorly written hypothesis. Well, Again, what is smarter, right? How do you quantify that? How do you define that? There's different types of smartness. Some people are book smart. Some people are what street smart. Some people are socially smart. Some people are um, uh, athletically smart. Okay, so there's different ways of evaluating smarter, right? So this is gonna be probably a better hypothesis. Uh, girls will score higher on the ACT than boys. Well, this is this can show you that this can uh, quantify a measure of smartness, right? If you score higher in a test, you're probably considered to be smarter, right? So girls will score higher on the ACT than boys. We can measure the scores on the ACTs, right? And compare the scores between girls and boys. Sometimes we have alternative hypotheses which that means that there could be more than one explanation for a phenomena, all right? So for example, in terms of the, of the previous example with your remote, right? Um, the remote thing, right? It could have been the batteries. But if that wasn't the problem, then another hypothesis, maybe, maybe the TV was unplugged, right? So again, there could be more than one explanation for a phenomenon. Uh, and then you come up with a prediction. The prediction is based on the hypothesis. Prediction, what is expected to happen if the hypothesis is correct. Okay, that's gonna be your prediction. Then, now that we have our prediction and hypothesis, then we build up a experiment. <clears throat> An experiment is a procedure 
be signed to test hypothesis. Be signed to test a hypothesis. And verify predictions. When we run an experiment, what we really run is something called a controlled experiment. Okay. A controlled experiment is one is where only one adjustable condition or variable is being tested. All of the other variables must be kept constant. And I will give you an example of an experiment in a later video. All right. But for right now, just know that when we run experiments, the experiments that we run are controlled experiments. At the end of the day, the experiments may tell us whether it may or may not support the hypothesis. It doesn't always have to support the hypothesis. Finally, with conclusion. So based on this experiment and based on the results, then we have a, a conclusion, right? A scientist determines whether the hypothesis was either supported or rejected based on the data. Determines whether the hypothesis was either supported or rejected based on the data. So I'm going to put here either one or the other. Was either supported or rejected based on the data. If a hypothesis has been tested and not rejected, then we say that it has been tentatively accepted or just supported, supported by the data. And then conclusions may usually result in new hypotheses. All right, so I told you about a control experiment, but what exactly is a control experiment? Well, we use it to investigate a hypothesis. Now, in a control experiment, in a controlled experiment, one variable, one factor or variable is modified or changed while all other factors are held constant. Okay. In a control experiment, we have two main groups. We have something called the control group, the control group, which does not receive, and that's the keyword, does not, or keywords here, does not receive the specific factor being changed or being tested. It's going to work as a standard against which the experimental group is going to be compared to. Okay. The other group or groups are going to be the experimental ones. experimental group. This group is going to receive the specific factor that has been changed. Okay. And it's going to differ from the control group in that just one factor on their starting. And I will give an example of an experiment in a little bit, and I'll show you how this control and experimental groups are used. A control experiment allows someone to draw conclusions about the effect of the one variable that is being modified. And that's why it's important to have these groups because you only need to change one thing. If you change many things, then you don't know where the change came from, right? So for example, in the in terms of the TV and the remote, you change the batteries and if you plug the TV or unplug, well, no, that's actually kind of obvious. Think about, for example, think about making a making cookies right you're making the cookies let's say uh you added more chocolate chip cookies chocolate chips and you also i don't know baked it uh maybe higher temperature let's just put that here
or higher temperature, right? Now, why do you like it more? Why is it going to be? Because you added a chips, chocolate chips, so you added more temperature to it, right? Then at the end of the day, you only want to change one, either the chocolate chips or the temperature. Otherwise, you don't know where the change came from. You don't know why you like one cookie more than the other, right? Um, so only one thing changes, right? And that's why we have a control experiment. Talking about control experiments, uh, we have uh, different variables. We have the independent and the independent and the dependent variable. So independent variable. The variable that is being manipulated or changed. Okay, this is a variable that is being manipulated or changed. The factor under investigation. Well, we have also the dependent, dependent variable. And the variable is a factor whose value is measured in an experiment to see whether it is influenced by changes in another factor. In this case, the independent variable. Okay. And while design experiments often test just one independent variable at a time. Now that I gave you all of these words and all these definitions, now let's put it together in my next video. And I'm going to come through. Uh, I'm going to give you an example where it puts everything together.